several times. Protect yourself at all times. Good luck to you. It's much more leverage and much more power. <laughs> so he's Be interesting to see how Perez deals with the hand speed. Broner in his last fight used the right uppercut to hurt 100% of his power shots in that fight, according to CompuBox. He was accurate. That are depending on him, so he's coming to try to perform for those people. The Perez team befriended him as Perez takes a big... Yeah, um, you saw that uh, young boy in the ring. Left hook by Broner. So that's a double... Ponce de Leon showed some... Flow. Shoulder guard. He has a really good defense with his shoulders, and it's very difficult for fighters to hit. Broner on twice in his career, but he took a good, a good corner left hook. Perez seems very relaxed in there here in round one. Not at all. Jab, Take it go friend. right in, right off okay. his jab. Carry that lead punch. Fainted the jab and led with left hook and landed right on the nose. Great punch. 32 punches in that round. Five of them were power connects. They're brought a right hand, and that might not be a good thing for Perez. Round is I don't like Perez backing up from from Broner so much because Broner's the boxing skills. He's younger than most of them. He's tall. Broner stepped. He's using that jab very good with Broner. Good hook by Perez, though. Right over the top and shake free of the clinching for Broner. I mean, he's winning, but he's not totally controlled yet because he hasn't broken situation. He's always relaxed, even though it's not. Uh, In front of Broner, where Broner's able to get that jab and get the range going. Yes, he is. Like I said, boy in a defensive position at all times, mentally and physically. But he's a good game fight. Talk about the learning curve in terms of Broner's back. Perez hurt on a right to the ear. Outboxed him thoroughly so far. Hey, oh, whoa, no dump! No dump! He's too high for the right hook upstairs. Okay. You got me? Round 48% as he was accurate and he hurt Perez's. Perez, he also landed a big left hook late in that round. Any talk. Shut up. Let me talk to the man. I'm the trainer. I'm the head trainer. He, he was critical of the end of that round because he felt Broner was rushing things. His, you know, Perez talked about he was better with his feet. He's not really using his feet. Hurt. Left hand hurt. Perez pointing to the back of his head, but I think it hit range. That's exactly right. He uses his shoulders and his upper body. For Look, this is a junior lightweight who punches like a featherweight, and I'm a... You know, the top dog, as they call it. But when you get in with an elite fighter... Power. Right. Double left hand for greater punches to get in there. Yeah, well, he's allowing Broner to stay in punching range. Stays in punching range. So he should be closing the gap and being closer to Broner. Warner found out, he's found out he can't punch Broner in the face. I mean, he's been, never been in this class before. Good right hand by Broner. A better life, something that Eloy has never forgotten. Okay, Bob, let me ask you a question. Who do you know that beat Adrian Broner standing right? Three to nothing, 30 to 27, Adrian Broner. Watch that. That's absolutely fantastic, the way Broner does it. I love that. And DNA. He's going to wish he didn't have him. Three to nothing. Saw the showmanship of Broner, too, as he got into that clinch with Brown Broner and used what he thinks is his superior footwork. And like I said, the biggest thing for Broner is he's keeping his pressure on Perez. He by just staying right there yes, and not he doing has. something different? Yes, he has. By eight. When he walks to the ring, Kevin Cunningham, who's the lead trainer here in St. Louis. Good straight right hand, and down goes Perez. Make it. Oh, come on. Whatever he wanted and knocked him out in spectacular fashion. Third. 24 seconds of round number four. The winner by knockout victory, and still the undefeated WBO Junior Lightweight. Champion of the world, Adrian, the problem.